It's a good half an hour after takeoff, and we're over the Baltic Sea. We've reached our cruising altitude of 33,000 feet, which is about 10,000 meters. The DC-10 has a lot to offer passengers. Shorter flying times than the Airbus, a quieter cabin than the Jumbo, and larger windows than both types. DC-10 is impressive in other respects, too. DC-10 is an inspiring plane, for its pilots and, with all it has to offer, for its passengers too. At our takeoff in Frankfurt, we weighed about 251 tonnes. However, we were close to maximum takeoff weight but for this aeroplane. There are other versions, for example, those flown by Condor, which can be up to 12 tonnes heavier. With takeoff power set, the engines wind up to 10,800 revolutions per minute. At the same time, they draw in 600 cubic meters of air, which is about the same capacity as your average family house. However, they also use 3 liters of fuel per second. And what do we get for all that? 235 kilonewtons of thrust. Und was kriegen wir dafür? 235 kilonewton Schub. Beim Abheben That's about 55,000 pounds of thrust per engine, of course. These figures are even more impressive when one thinks that the DC-10 was already on the market at the beginning of the 1970s. At that time, it was a very high-tech aeroplane. This early Lufthansa promotional film, The Long Haul Specialist, was produced to introduce the DC-10 to the German public. It emphasized the use of new materials and modern construction techniques at the McDonnell Douglas Long Beach factory. A DC-10 is big, 50 meters long and with a fuselage 6 meters across. The tail is as high as a six-story building. Various versions of the DC-10 were built. One was used for air-to-air -air refueling by the United States Air Force, who bought 60 examples. A total of 386 civilian versions were eventually sold, in three main versions. The first, the 10 series, was fitted with General Electric motors, which together generate about 120,000 pounds of thrust. The 10 series is a mid-range version, intended for flights within the USA or short routes across the Atlantic. 
two long-haul versions were built, both with engines producing over 155,000 pounds of thrust. The 30 series has General Electric engines and the 40 series has Pratt & Whitney power units. All Lufthansa's DC-10s are 30 series models. All three versions can carry over 300 passengers, but the long-haul versions can fly more than 6,000 miles non-stop. Later, another variation, the 15 series, was developed. It first flew in 1981, but only a few were ever built. In the 1970s, airliners invariably had a three-crew cockpit. Today, that is the exception, and it seems likely that the job of flight engineer will in time disappear altogether. In the DC-10, though, the flight engineer still has an important role. Joachim Sindel explains. We have three jobs here, uh, two for pilots and one for the flight engineer. The pilots are mainly concerned with flying and navigational tasks, while the flight engineer monitors and takes care of the aeroplane systems. For example, the flight systems include the hydraulics, electrics, pneumatics and air conditioning, and the engine instruments. Yeah, also, during the really interesting phases of the flight, i.e. takeoff, climbing, descending or landing, I oversee the things to do with flying and navigation as well, uh, such as course, speed, height, and it goes without saying, the aeroplane configuration, the position of the flaps, slats and landing gear. How do you go about monitoring the DC-10's instruments on a long-haul flight? Yes, uh, we, well, we have a special procedure for that. We go over our circuit diagrams in a certain flow pattern and then test the instruments, the indicators and warning lights. Naturally, we can't do that for nine hours, mainly because we have over 500 warning lights, 16 acoustic warnings and 700 fuses. You can't keep an eye on them all the time. Therefore, there's a master warning system on the aircraft. If a fault occurs anywhere, it's indicated centrally, and then we take care of the problem.